one of the oldest rivalries in the LFL, takes center stage tonight as the Chicago Bliss battle the Atlanta Steam next. Nothing like a strong woman that takes what you want. That's powerful. We make history when you step on that football field. Now's the time to release that anger, that pain on them. Do you believe in miracles? They don't deserve no mercy. Them get put down or they get laid down. The most successful people in life have failed. We have failed. Everything we've ever asked for is right in front of us right now. So let's get it. LFL football night has arrived to Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome inside the broadcast booth of LFL football night. Mitch Mortaza and Bobby Huco. Joining us a little bit later, Ms. Heidi Golznick providing sideline coverage. Tonight we've got an Eastern Conference battle, the Chicago Bliss. Coming into Atlanta, the battle, the steam. Now Bobby Huco, when these two teams faced off in the past, they were really dominating this conference. For at least one of these two teams, that's not the case anymore. Right, that would be the Chicago Bliss. Here's a team, they've won four Legends Cup championships, but this 2019 version, they don't have that same championship pedigree. They lost a lot of players to retirement. They lost Ali Alberts, one of the top players, to the free agency that lost their head coach. They lost their top linebacker, the former MVP, Kristen Morrison, she's out with an injury. So it wasn't unexpected they're gonna take this slide. Yeah, Chicago's been decimated on the field as well as the sidelines. The entire coaching staff turnover Sidney Lewis entered as the new head coach. But the Atlanta Steam, I think that's a big point to make here in the pre in the pregame show. A couple big points, because we just got word of a last minute injury. Lauren Ziegler, the all-star safety and wide receiver, has been scratched from this game. A last minute pull from the lineup. That's going to impact them on both sides of the ball. But getting back to the Atlanta as a whole, as a team, this is a roster that's lost to a lot of the better teams in the league in recent years. We look back just a couple weeks ago when they lost to Los Angeles in L.A. Is this kind of a get well game for them going up against kind of a decimated roster in Chicago? Yes, it is. In fact, they need this. And you're right. They lost to L.A., but on paper, they look as talented as Seattle. I mean, they got some girls that can play football, but you're right. They have a problem not only this year, but over the years. They meet, beat the weaker teams. In fact, they're big favorites over Chicago tonight. But they play the elite teams, and they always lose. They need to get their confidence going tonight, have a solid game going against the big guys. Well, if they're going to win and going to make a Legends Cup run, a lot of it's going to be on the shoulders of the young signal caller, Dakota Hughes entering her sixth season in the LFL. In fact, our own Heidi Goldsnick sat down with Hughes to talk about her journey through the LFL and what a championship would mean to her and this city. Thank you, Mitch. Dakota Hughes, or perhaps better known around the league as Simply Dakota, has attained every level of personal success, from being named to multiple all-fantasy teams to leading the league in passing yards. But it's that all-elusive Legends Cup championship that is still her number one goal. And if Hughes is ever to hoist a trophy in September, it'll be not only because of her ability as quarterback and leader on the field, but also because of the incredible support system she has surrounding her off the field. On a personal note, it looks like you got engaged this year and your family seems to be wonderfully supportive. How does it feel for you when you're either at home here or even on the road to look up into the stands and to see an entire section dedicated to cheering you on? You know, last year was supposed to be it for me. And uh, I thought when I walked away from this field for the last time, it would be it. And then uh, Zig and Dina, they brought me back and um, you know, my life is a little bit different than it was this time last year in a very good way. Um, super grateful for it. So I've been a, it's been a different kind of mentality for me this year. Um, but every time we get here, it just kind of brings it all back. But being able to look up there, I think we've talked about it for the last two weeks, you know, what they're wearing painting their nails for the blackout, uh, all the girls are. And, um, you know, it's just, it's moments like that. And my little brother, it's just, it's special. Um, and it seems to get more special the older I get. And uh, I guess the more time I realize I don't get to play this much longer. So 
Um, it's just, it's very, very special and uh, I'm grateful. I think I've got about 150 coming tonight. So um, I'm, I'm super excited. That, that stuff means the most to me because the people I get to share it with, um, those memories are priceless. At only 24 years old, Dakota Hughes has the maturity of a veteran quarterback and certainly incredible support from her family and teammates, all of whom want the same thing for her, her first ever Legends Cup championship. Back to you guys. Dakota Hughes will try to take one more step toward the postseason as her Atlanta team take on the Chicago Bliss next. Back to LFL football night in Atlanta, Georgia. Let's go down to the field. You can only take so much dish motherfucking respect. Yeah. Your motherfucker should have been practicing them motherfucking plays and on some new plays and doing all that choreography shit. Bust they motherfucking ass, man. We got everybody pissed off at them. Or we pissed off at everybody. But I need y'all to bottle that shit up and let it the fuck out. I swear when that, they start playing that shit, that shit got me on fucking 10. My shit beating hard. Get your shit to where my shit is at. And we gonna beat the fuck out of them. This shit shouldn't be close. This shouldn't be. We know what they gonna do. Get your shit together, man. Let's go have some motherfucking fun. Turn this motherfucking ball over, man. Get this shit up right now. Let's go. Let's go. Get it up. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We coming out hard in the motherfucking real quick now. All right, let's go. Blitz on three. One, two, three. That is Chicago Bliss head coach Sidney Lewis. How about that fire? He's got me fired up to play. He told me we're going to see a different Chicago team tonight. They're going to need it against the league's second-ranked passer, Dakota Hughes. Starting off from shotgun, Nicole Hulse getting the start and getting the rock early. Good-looking defense up front by Emma Vander Hayden and Deanna Hightower. Now let's meet Atlanta's starting offense. Dina Wojowski, center. Julia Fezikai, your tight end. Aubrey Williams, tight end. Lauren Ziegler, wide receiver. Michelle Marshall, wide receiver. Nicole Hulse, running back. Dakota Hughes, quarterback. The big story is the late scratch of Lauren Ziegler, wide receiver. Look for a Fezikai to get a lot of touches tonight. Early on, it has been all Hulse, the outstanding rookie back. We sat down with her earlier. Nicole, it appears you came out of nowhere, and so far you're having a great first season at running back. Tell us how it feels to be a rookie in the LFL. It's been a roller coaster so far, um, but really there's a lot of veterans on our team. I'm trying to absorb as much information and trying to really just copy what they do. Um, there's, I mean, we have Lauren on our team and Elfie with the running back. They're, they've really helped me out a lot. Michelle Marshall coming from Texas. I was just trying to absorb as much information from them as I can. And we only get a few moments to really show what we can do. So I'm just trying to capitalize on that. What a season Nicole Hulse is having. She's only five foot tall, 109. But what she doesn't have in height, she has in heart. What a season. There she is again in the open field. A nine yard carry. That'll move the sticks once again for Atlanta. Char Baker, the middle linebacker, did not get outside. That's a big loss for Chicago. Losing Morrison, Baker has to fill in, but she's not out there. The whole outside is for holes. What a run. I got to like, I mean, you're, you're seeing a lot of new stars being born in 2019. Mariah Lopez in Los Angeles, Lauren Crouch in Omaha, and Nicole Holtz again with the Rock here in Atlanta. This time an eight yard carry, make it Michelle Marshall the free agent signee from Austin. Head coach Dane Robinson said this is the game plan between the tackles. Without Kristen Morrison being in there, they're going right at Char Baker. So now a second and two. Michelle Marshall adding another element to this offense. We know her as a late heroics type receiver. Now factoring into the run game. A second and two at the Chicago 12. Dropping back to pass. Had Jolie a Fezikai, and that's something that really plagued the Fezikai over the last couple years, the drops. We thought she was finished with that. All last season, she dropped the ball. This season, she's catching a lot of balls, but that was a perfect pass out, by Dakota Hughes. She should have pulled that one in. They would have had the ball on the one-yard line. That looked like Jocelyn Gray. The corner was beaten on the route. 
you could say Dakota Hughes a little late and to the outside. Nonetheless, now a third and two. Ball at the 12 of Chicago from the shotgun. And another drop by a Fezekai. Great play selection by Mark White, the offensive coordinator. A pick play. Marshall came in and picked the defensive back who was covering a Fezekai. But tonight so far, she has hands of stone. They've got to like something they see in a Fezekai. Targeted two consecutive plays. And as a result, two consecutive drops. You can't have that from your go-to receiver in the absence of Lauren Ziegler. Well, that's it. We knew they were going to go to a Fezekai with Ziegler at. She's got to produce and catch the football. Now going to the corner of the end zone. That was again intended for a Fezekai. The ball sailed over her head. A Fezekai wants a flag, but that was uncatchable. Good shit. Let's go. You know we won't. 24. Hey. Let's go. Seven. Hey. Hey. 24. Double hit. Let's go. 24. Great stop by the Chicago team. Sid Lewis has his team ready to play tonight. They stopped the potent Atlanta offense. Now, I'm not sure if the Sid Lewis, the head coach, was more amped about that or his defense, but that is a big time goal line stand by that Chicago defense. Now Chaz Dusan going to work. Throwing down the field and overshooting. Ball intended for Tamika Robinson. That gives you an indication of the speed Robinson has as well as the arm Dusan has. Well, she was open. There was pressure on Dusan. She had to hurry the pass, but that could have been a touchdown for Chicago. She has the arm, but her footwork, it was terrible in the pocket. Dusan, a very raw talent, has not had a lot of experience at the quarterback position, and it's certainly showing at least early in the 2019 season. This is Dusan setting up a quarterback keeper. That'll be a three-yard run. While wow, Dusan got no help by Tamika Robinson. She came on short motion, supposed to crack back on the defensive end. She forgot to do one thing, Mitch. Block. She didn't block anybody. Dusan got hit. Robinson, not one of the better blocking receivers in the league, but you saw her speed on that opening play. Now a third and seven as this Atlanta crowd comes to life. Dusan with an ugly-looking shovel pass. That is complete to Tory Giles. Complete for about six yards. Now let's meet Chicago's offense. Kate Mustin, center. Tory Phoenix, tight end. D e. Hightower, tight end. Tyler Lee, wide receiver. Tamika Robinson, wide receiver. JaVale Thompson, running back. Chaz Dusan, quarterback. For Chicago to have any chance tonight, it's going to come down to the quarterback, Chaz Dusan. She has to play big. On a fourth and one, this is Dusan trying to find a running lane. And that is Dina Wojcicki. Wojo getting the big time stop for this Atlanta defense as they'll take over with 440 remaining in a scoreless game. Back to LFL football night in beautiful downtown Atlanta, Georgia, as the Atlanta Steam take over on downs at the Chicago 18-yard line. And that's Jolie of Fezekai. What she couldn't get done through the air, she does on the ground, a five-yard carry. A Fezekai tackled by Jocelyn Gray, the free safety. That's her fourth tackle of the night. You know it's not good when your free safety is leading the team in tackles. Sharp Baker has to step up her game at middle linebacker. And this Atlanta offense has really struggled through the air and has had all of his success on the ground, namely on the wheels of Nicole Hulse. And they're going to go back to the rookie up the middle. Look at the speed. Hulse, one of the faster backs you talked about it earlier, into the hole, a nine-yard carry. She had nine yards because of the block by the center, Dina Wojcicki. Watch this block on Shar Baker. Watch the center right there, 17. Absolutely destroying Shar Baker and then driving her down the field. That is pro technique right there. And that'll set up a first and goal for this Atlanta offense who's already been on this side of the field earlier and stalled out. Nicole Holst chased down. That's somebody that's playing some pretty good defensive ball right now. That's Deanna Hightower. 
She came to play tonight, but Char Baker, again, the middle linebacker, missed the tackle in the backfield. Could have had holes for nothing. In fact, it would have been oh negative ball. yardage. Jeez, right now, Char Baker needs a Snickers bar. Yeah. Second and goal ball to Chicago right. two. A full backfield. Nicole Hulse deep as the tailback. Let's see if they go back to Hulse. No, into the end zone. Touchdown Atlanta. It's the veteran, Keon Harrison. Jessica Smith, she got caught in her track. She froze. Instead of going after Harrison, she froze. Dakota Hughes goes right over her head. Easy score for Atlanta. Yeah, Keon Harrison on nobody's radar offensively. Gets out in the flat wide open. That capped off a four-play, 18-yard drive that only took a minute 51 as Atlanta finally taking advantage of great field position. I like the way Dakota Hughes is spreading the wealth with Ziegler out. Everybody's going to get the ball tonight. Atlanta going for the two-point conversion. Fakes the shovel, now going back to it. I tell you what, Nicole Hulse, if she wasn't on the radar around the league, this is a statement game for number 19. Wow, Chicago can't tell Hulse nothing. She is all over the field tonight. I'd like to have her on my team anytime. So Atlanta getting on the board first with an eight to nothing lead. We knew this spread was big coming into the game. This is a period where Chicago has got to respond to stay within earshot of this game. Mark White's game plan, the offensive coordinator, is right on schedule so far. A misdirection handoff, giving it to the speedster, Tamika Robinson. A nice seven yard end around reverse to Robinson. Wow, that was interesting. It actually looked like the old Statue of Liberty, but on the inside, watch this. He was gonna pass, inside, give her the ball. That's the old Statue of Liberty. It worked perfectly. They get great yardage. Hey, when you're struggling the way Chicago is struggling offensively, I think you got to really pull out the old playbook. Right, and they got the talent. You give the ball to Tamika Robinson, she can get yardage. Yeah, there's really two weapons that are left over from that championship run. That's Javille Thompson at the top of your screen, and Tamika Robinson flanked to the bottom. From the shotgun, Dusan looking to the right side and not able to connect with Ty Alley. You can tell they do not have a quarterback coach on this Chicago team because she has absolutely no footwork. And we'll take a media timeout as the hometown Atlanta Steam lead it eight to nothing. Start up the bandwagon for Nicole Hulse. Back to LFL football night. Nearing the one minute mark of the first quarter as the Atlanta Steam lead it eight to nothing. And here's a little swing pass out of the backfield complete to Javille Thompson. They needed three, they got two. When I spoke to offensive coordinator from Chicago, Defeat the Walk, he told me part of the game plan was getting the football out in space to Javelle Thompson. Swing pass like that, just get her the football, and then look, let her do what she does. Especially when you factor in the inaccuracy of Chaz Dusan down the field. They got to play to her strengths, and that's really the short passing game. Here's a fourth and one, ugly looking shovel pass. Javille Thompson though, turns it into a seven yard carry, an all important first down for this offense. Toussaint actually went the wrong way, but she made an athletic play and pitched it outside. They got the first down, great athletic play by Toussaint. Chaz Toussaint making some plays out there, but if she struggles, it'll be interesting to see just how short the leash is we did see Sharquela Baker get a start earlier in the season. I think she just needs a lot of coaching. I'm not sure she's getting any. A low snap back to Dusan, able to get back on it. But you know what? You want a little more effort from your quarterback. She almost stopped on that play. It almost looked like a practice where you don't care if it's a fumble because she didn't react. She luckily got it back. But Kate Messing got hurt. This is big for Chicago. The center got hurt. They have Hightower now switched over, and they brought Low Meyer to tight end. But that was a bad snap by Hightower. And that will officially bring us to the end of the first 10 minutes of play as Chaz Tucson and this Chicago offense is struggling, trailing it 8 to nothing.
LFL Mobile, giving you access to the gridiron goddesses of the LFL with exclusive photos, videos, live game reporting, and fan promotions. LFL Mobile, download on your Android or iPhone. Back to LFL football night, and that is a sight that no Steam player wants to see. Lauren Ziegler in street clothes. I think they did that for one reason, to keep her healthy. If this was a playoff game, I'm sure she'd be playing, but they think they can easily handle Chicago. Second and 11. Dusan putting a little mustard on that one, but well behind the intended receiver, Ty Alley. She stared down Ty Alley. I don't know if there's any coaching at all going on over there at the quarterback position, and I'm only asking for a friend because I just don't see anything. Yeah, this is an ugly offense led by a really inexperienced and perhaps out of position quarterback. A third and 11 at the Atlanta 20 yard line. And you can see Dusan looking down at that play card all the way down to the final second. A lot of mass confusion offensively for Chicago. That's another swing pattern. Nearly intercepted by Dominique Jennings. That should have been a pick six. Here we go again. She just stared down her receiver. She's telegraphing where she's throwing the football. Now let's meet Atlanta's defense. Dominique Jennings, Dia. Brittany Dimery, defensive end. Keon Harrison, middle linebacker. Lauren Ziegler, free safety. AZ Johnson, strong safety. Amber Clark, corner. Michelle Marshall, corner. With Lauren Ziegler being pulled out right before the game, they had to put a Fezekai at free safety. If I was Chicago, I would test the Fezekai real quick. Chicago going to call a timeout on a fourth and 11 as they continue to trail this one eight to nothing behind a stingy Atlanta defense. Back to LFL football night right outside of downtown Atlanta, Georgia on a fourth and 11 for Chicago. Dusan back to pass. Not putting a lot of touch on it. That pass intended for Tamika Robinson. Another ugly pass by Dusan. That was way behind Robinson, and that was fourth down. You gotta make that completion, get the first down. It's not even close. And once again, Atlanta's offense with great field position starting at their own 20 yard line. Hey, please look inside. Please look inside. All right. Oh, okay. Dakota Hughes taking charge. Hey, I love her in the huddle. This team loves line. to Let's play for her. Up. One of the best the LFL has ever please. seen. Her stats this year are off the charts. So a first and 10. Atlanta already leading this one, eight to nothing. From the shotgun, a low snap back to Hughes. A flea flicker down the field. Out of the hands of Michelle Marshall. If you're counting at home, that's at least four drops in the first half. But watch this technique by Marshall. She puts her body between herself and Murdoch so only she can catch the football. The only problem is she drops the football. Murdoch gets a little bit of a hand on it. Actually a good play. She's a great athlete. She's an interesting character she is. Her favorite hobby is texting. I say that because there was an interesting moment pre-game when she was supposed to be listening to authority, but she was texting and didn't hear a word. That's Dakota Hughes electing to keep it herself a three-yard carry. Read option by Hughes, great pull, pulls it out, draws everybody in, and then watch the blocking downfield by Michelle Marshall. She has all the intangibles, great block on Murdoch. We've got a flag down on the field. Early indication this will be on Chicago. Bigger defense on Chicago. Five down penalty, automatic first down. So that's an illegal defense giving Atlanta's offense an automatic first down. If you're curious about what that penalty really means, you can only have three defenders inside the defensive box. That's usually the defensive end and middle linebacker. Chicago once again sneaking in a defender inside the box. This time playing to their favor as they sack Hughes for a four yard loss. Atlanta tried the same read option to the right. Hughes pulled the ball, but Torrey Giles anticipated Hughes pulling the ball, came outside and nailed her. 
So the Chicago defense getting four of the five yards they gave up on that penalty. Now setting up a second and 14. Ball still on the Atlanta side of the field. As Dakota Hughes, one of the better quarterbacks in the game, going back to work. Holsey remains in the backfield. That looked to be a design throw into the flat, this time caught. Finally, Jolia Fezikai comes down with one. Watch this technique by Hughes. You have to get your chest pointing at your target. There she goes. She turned her body all the way around and throw the ball perfectly. That's what I'm talking about, quarterback technique. Get your chest around toward your target. Perfect pass. This Atlanta offense needed 14 yards, picked up 12 on that connection from Hughes to Fezikai. Now a third and two, full backfield. Not fooling anybody on that defensive front for Chicago. Torrey Giles all over Alfie Gore. Finally, for the first time all evening, Chicago filled in both A gaps and held Atlanta to no yardage. Great play by that defense, finally. Here's an early opportunity for this Chicago Bliss defense to get a stop on a fourth and one. They need it right now because the Chicago offense, as inconsistent as they've been, this team is only down one score. A fourth and one, ball at the 13. Hughes back to pass, looking to the left, now to the right, caught. But Jessica Smith, the left corner, That'll be no gain, a great open field tackle, and a turnover on downs. Kristen Maddis in at receiver for Ziegler. She makes a great catch, but you're right, Smith one-on-one -on -one holds her for less than one yard. Incredible defensive stop for Chicago. Look at the energy on that sideline, led by Sidney Lewis, the head coach. Give him credit for not throwing in the towel. They haven't had the best start this season. Lewis is doing a great job with Chicago's morale tonight, but I really got a question to play selection by offensive coordinator Mark White. You got Alfie Gore in the backfield who can get more than one yard, and you throw to a rookie receiver outside, never caught a ball before in this game. Questionable at best. Alfie Gore, one of the better short yardage backs, as Chicago takes to the field once again, deciding to try to stretch the field with Tamika Robinson. Robinson had Johnson beat on the inside on a deep post pattern, but Dusan, this whole first half, she's got no touch or feel on the football. Yeah, absolutely no productivity for this Chicago offense. Now a second and 10. They've got to get some momentum here. They've got to string together a few plays. If you can't do it with the pass game, keep it on the ground. Right now, they have no running game going either. Not even trying to call it runs. Here is a run play, that's Javille Thompson. A lot of traffic in front. The rookie defensive end, Rachel Blaylock, the five foot seven Atlanta Georgia native, all over Thompson. There's absolutely no blocking up front by Chicago. When Kate Meston got hurt, they had to put Hightower at center. They brought in Lo Meyer, she's playing right tackle, right tight end right now. And she had no effort on that play at all. Didn't block anybody. That'll set up a third and 10 for this rather challenged offense. Chaz Dusan from the shotgun. And sailing over the head of Dusan into the end zone. Blaylock tagging Dusan. That will result in a safety. Just a comedy of errors by the offensive line of Chicago. Hightower snaps not even close to Dusan. She gets the football, blade lock, pushes her out of the back of the end zone. Two points for Atlanta. Me. I need all of you. I know there's more than you. I just need you to pick one and drive their ass out of the way. I need help. Dakota Hughes taking control of that huddle on the Chicago side of the ball. Ever since their center, Kate Meston, went out, it has been a bunch of substitute teachers, and that cost them two points. A first and 10 trying to set up the slant deflected at the line of scrimmage. Deanna Hightower trying to make up for that poor snap. Got a nice deflection at the line of scrimmage. You have to blame the offensive line on that. The tight end, you have to block the defensive end low, so she puts her hands down. Right there, they didn't block her at all. She put her hands up and stopped the quick post. The passing game simply has not been there for Atlanta. The only productivity has been with Nicole Hulse and that run game. A second and 10. 
The Chicago defense keying on the run. They're going to go back to Hulse. Hulse following her blocking. That was a six-yard carry by the five-foot back. Outstanding cut by Hulse. I love the way she sees Hulse and go after him quick. She goes right to the line of scrimmage, gets positive yardage. She's killing it so far tonight in the first half. She got 40 yards already, an average of 5.7. Outstanding. They're really investing a lot in this rookie running back out of Detroit, Michigan. Now a third and four ball at the 21. As Hughes looks over that Chicago defense. Inside handoff, Keon Harrison. A great 10-yard run. That'll move the sticks for this Atlanta offense. Mark White, the offensive coordinator, again mixing get back, it up. Get back out. Get back, get back. Come back down here again. Who gets fucked up again? Get fucked up again. You gotta love Wojo, man. She gets this whole team fired up. Hughes doing a great job leading the entire offense. Wojo firing that lineup. They're moving the football. Yeah, you're starting to feel some momentum build with this offense. Granted, they're already up 10 to nothing, but it's not, it doesn't feel like they've been up in this game. No, it's still close. First and 10, rolling right, has a receiver. Jolie Afezikai, who's had a really down first half, finally snagging one inside the five yard line. Great throw again by Hughes. I like the play design. You swing it back out of the backfield, and you have her running a corner from tight end. And that'll take us to our two-minute warning here in Atlanta, Georgia, where the hometown steam now have their lead up to 10 to nothing. Our goal, you can't give up anything with under 90 seconds or a minute left in the game because you're just going to air it out. Keep the goose egg on the board. If we have to go sky, then my ends, great run. I need more hits on the quarterback. I need more, more, not enough. Back to LFL football night. That is Atlanta steam head coach and defensive coordinator Dane Robinson urging on that defense to hold this shutout. He's going to love that defense pitching a shutout right now. Offense only 10 points, but remember, maybe the greatest player of all time, she's already a Hall of Famer, Lauren Ziegler, got pulled right before the start of the game, so that's going to hurt the offense and defense. A great starting point here. First and goal inside the five-yard line. They're going to go toss right. Alfie Gore to the goal line. Touchdown, Atlanta. Alfie Gore running like Frank Gore. What power, what speed around the edge. Shooting an hour with the crowd. This is power football and I love it. Great to see Alfie Gore really mature into a power back in the LFL. She has been the go-to person in goal line offense as well as short yardage where Hulse is really the home run hitter. Absolutely, Vander Heiden did not have a chance. Gore steamrolled right over the top of her. Hulse right. back in for the extra point attempt. They'll go for the two point conversion from the three yard line. A minute 48 remaining in the first half. There's the handoff to Hulse. Hulse trying to break inside, make it Marshall. Michelle Marshall will add another two points as Atlanta now takes a 16 to nothing lead. Watch this, Michelle Marshall, only 128. A small running back, watch her run over Gray into the end zone, just powered right through her, unbelievable. Michelle Marshall, five foot three, 120 pounds, should not overpower you like that at the goal line. No, the tackling technique for Chicago has been horrible so far. Not to take anything away from Marshall, she's a great athlete. In fact, Dane Robinson compared her to Wes Welker. You could put her anywhere and she's gonna excel. So a first and 10, as we approach the 140 mark of the first half, that's complete. Tamika Robinson, a six yard completion, the clock does stop. That is Dusan's best pass of the night. She threw it back shoulder, perfectly placed on timing. If she can keep that up, they have a chance. That's the only way Chicago can have a chance in this game. Now a second and four. Ball out to the 21 as we approach the 120 mark. That's Tamika Robinson trying to get the edge. Blowing past Amber Clark. 
That'll be good for six. She does get out of bounds, so that should stop the clock. It looked like it was going to get more than six. They missed the block outside on Amber Clark. If they seal Clark off, that goes for a lot more than six yards. Now a first and 10 at the Atlanta 23. The clock did stop, so Chicago, check that. They're going to roll the clock now. Chicago does have a timeout. What do you do here? Do you test Chas Duzon's arm? Absolutely. She has a strong arm. Let her throw the football. So a first and 10, a two-man rush, throwing underneath. That's caught. Javille Thompson into the end zone. Touchdown, Chicago. Got to love that pass by Dusan. It was a wheel route down the sideline. Nobody was there. Johnson way late coming over. Black. What the fuck? Dane Robinson. What the fuck are you doing? Absolutely perplexed by his defense. Get your ass over here! I don't want to be a part of this huddle it's if I'm a here. defender. Hey, it's Sky! It's Sky! Fuck! Come hey, that's on all of you! All of you! Open your fucking mouth and listen! I've had it! Do your motherfucking job! Hey! Hey! It's... And guess what? It's empty! Lock black! Hey, check, check! I want five, 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 five. Dane Robinson obviously upset at his secondary. With less than a minute left in that till halftime, he lets them go deep on a wheel route down the sideline. Johnson didn't know who to cover. They had Thompson in the slot, Robinson going post, Thompson wide open. Chicago lining up for a two-point conversion, throwing in the flat open, but it looks like Chicago may have jumped here. That should back him up to about the eight-yard line. <laughs> Dana Wajowski coaching up the offense for Chicago. So that'll back him up to the eight yard line. Still a two point attempt. Despite that penalty, I think there's been some momentum given to Chicago when really Atlanta could have just closed the door on it. Absolutely, there was a lot of momentum. Good series for the Bliss offense. That's not a good pass right there. Kind of a jump pass, trying to avoid the rush of number nine, AZ Johnson. So the score remains 18 to six. Atlanta still up. Dane Robinson, the head coach of Atlanta, is beside himself because he told his entire team before that series he wanted to have a shutout at halftime. And because of a faulty coverage, there's points on the board. Yeah, I think he'd tell you he'd want to shut out for the entire game, not just the half. And that is a look of disgust on the face of Dane Robinson. Now we're under 50 seconds remaining. This is Dakota Hughes going back to work, getting to the sideline and out of bounds. That was an eight yard run, smartly getting out of bounds and stopping the clock. As always, Dakota Hughes is a very effective runner and she's great on the read option. She makes the right read, I would say 98% of the time. Now Atlanta burning one of their timeouts despite the clock stopping. So we're also going to take a break. With 50 seconds remaining, Chicago right back into this game. Back to LFL football night. A great aerial view of downtown Atlanta, Georgia. And indoors, the hometown Atlanta steam up 18 to 6. Just over 50 seconds left. remaining. Chicago hanging around. Who would have called this one? That is Michelle Marshall in motion, and she's going to get the rock, trying to break through the arm tackle of number 18, Jessica Smith. I love the way Marshall, when she gets the ball, she plants her foot, then goes north and south. I mean, I'd play her in the backfield a lot more, but they have so much talent, there's no room. A couple big tackles in the open field by Jessica Smith. Now we're almost at the 30-second mark, dropping back to pass under pressure. And just gets it away as Dakota Hughes. Stop the clock! 
stop the clock. Hey, stop the clock. That is Dane Robinson as the clock operator Come accidentally on. rolled the clock here. I need 22 on there. Yeah, that clock ran after Dakota Hughes hit the ground, or actually threw it away, and they're going to reset it at 22. With Dakota Hughes at quarterback, 22 seconds is a lot of time. She's got the arm to go to the length of the field. She's got the receivers, even without Ziegler, Fezekai and Marshall can go deep. And we've got another stoppage of play here as they reset the clock. We are now back to 22.2 seconds remaining. And as you said, Dakota Hughes will have no problems getting this ball to the end zone. Dropping back to pass the pocket, collapsing into the end zone. A great touch pass dropped again by Michelle Marshall. Marshall dropped it, but they're going to bring that one back. Wojowski just hogtied and then body slammed Vanderheide, and they're going to bring that back on a hold. We're going to get the call here shortly. It does look like it may be on Atlanta as we're down to about 15.9 seconds. Atlanta out of I timeout. I got a you're out of your fucking mind. Wojo, you literally grabbed her, put her in a headlock, and threw her down. That is a hold. Yeah, that backed him up another 10 yards. So this Atlanta offense going the wrong way right now. Second and 20. They're backed up to their own 17-yard line. You gotta love her intensity, though. I mean, usually at the end of the game, if you look at her uniform, it looks like a crime scene. Nobody plays harder in the LFL than Wojo. So a second and 20, and now they're gonna have to test the arm strength of Dakota Hughes. With Atlanta being out of timeouts, they've gotta work the sidelines here. Here comes the blitz, evading the rush, throwing down the field, wide open. Just missing Michelle Marshall, overthrowing her by a couple yards. Wow, Dakota Hughes is going to want to have that one back. She did a great job of climbing the pocket. Marshall wide open. You don't get that open in pregame warm-ups. All she had to do was get it anywhere square around Marshall, and it's a touchdown. But you saw there that this offense can get behind that Chicago defense that's very young and inexperienced in the secondary. Great play, just a bad pass, an overthrow by Hughes. Now a third and 20, 10 seconds remaining. You've got all receivers flanked to the left side. Hughes, quick check down into the flat. That'll go to Dina Wojowski. Wojowski still chipping away. And now fists are flying. Here we go. Anytime Dina Wojowski is anywhere near the football or a defender, expects something to go down. She's a mean player on the football field. In fact, on the football field, she doesn't even like herself. I got to tell you, I don't know this is Wojowski's fault. Labrinthia Murdoch, at the end of the play, there's number nine, went after Dina Wojowski. If anything, this has got to go on Murdoch. I'm not sure. You know Wojo. She probably start John with Murdoch. Murdoch went right after. <laughs> you can see Dina Wojowski's just having fun with this. But I tell you what, if you cost your team an opportunity here before the half, that's that's going to be big. This might go against Wojo. What, I got a penalty again? She shot me in the face. No fouls. Listen, listen, oh, I'll stand okay. penalty, OK? I'll stand penalty, OK? All right. I said good day. Yeah. So I guess Atlanta still had a timeout remaining. We're showing about five seconds on the clock. If you're that Chicago defense, you've got to drop on this because clearly Michelle Marshall has shown that she can get behind that secondary. Absolutely, just can't let him go deep behind you. But getting back to Wojo's penalty, it was offsetting, but you saw the coaches from Atlanta, they don't want anything to do with that. Fighting on the field, all that does is hurt, hurt your team. Oh, Nicole, so fourth oh, and seven, 
Ball at the Chicago 20-yard line. We've got another Back penalty up. here. Back it up. This Atlanta offense is simply shooting itself in the foot right now. This is where Dakota Hughes, she's a veteran now. She's no longer a rookie. She's six years in this league. She has to take control of this offense. Fourth and 12, ball at midfield. Here comes a four-man blitz. Down the field, wobbly pass into the end zone. Just beyond the outstretched arms of Amber Clark. And that's two missed opportunities for Dakota Hughes. I want to see this again. Did, did Clark get both hands on the football, or was that deflected? Great ball again by Hughes getting it down the field. It actually hits her in the hand. It would have been a great catch. Didn't happen. One of the reasons Clark is on the field is the injured Lauren Ziegler. Let's go down to the field. Guys, I'm with Lauren Ziegler, Hall of Fame wide receiver in safety, who's been ruled out of the game tonight. Lauren, why are you not in the lineup tonight? You know, it's uh, an injury that happened at the beginning of the L.A. game, actually, and I don't know how, but somehow I finished out the entire L.A. game with this injury. I've been rehabbing it, I've been getting ready to go, and hey, when it, when we're warm-ups, it pops, so I just got to go back to the drawing board and try to get it right again. So. All right, guys, it appears that Lauren is out physically, but mentally she's as strong as ever. We hope to see her back at the early as the next game. Back to you guys. Lauren Ziegler's absence was certainly felt on both sides of the ball for the Atlanta steam. But despite that, they will lead it 18 to 6 at halftime. And it wasn't because of the arm of Dakota Hughes. Nicole Holtz and Alfie Gore led the way for Atlanta. Back with halftime after this. Tamika Robinson trying to light a fire inside that Chicago Bliss locker room as we welcome you back to LFL football night. Mitch Mortaza and Bobby Huco. Bobby, the Atlanta Steam lead this one 18 to 6 at halftime. This is very similar to the game we saw play out earlier in the season between these two. That was a game that the Atlanta team ultimately won 30 to six. No, you're right. This Chicago offense continues to struggle and it starts with their quarterback. She looks really confused in the huddle. In fact, she looks down at her card all the time. She's not sure of making the call. Her footwork is really shoddy in her drop. She, in fact, she has no drop. She's just being an athlete back there. And she is a good athlete. She's a great running back, but I'm not sure she's a quarterback. She has to step her game up in the second half to have any shot tonight. Well, I don't think any quarterback, either quarterback, I should say, are having a great first half of football. Even the great Dakota Hughes is really struggling in the pocket. So it's been the run game for Atlanta that's given them the edge, really. No, you're right. That one-two punch, Nicole Hulse and Alfie Gore, look, it's outstanding. Gore between the tackles. She's running gutsy and strong, getting great yardage. And outside, Hulse can get there. And I don't think there's a back in the LFL gets to the hole quicker than Hulse. They look great. That gutsy gore that may stick. We might get a t-shirt after I all. I like that, gutsy now, not, gore. Not a lot of scoring in this game. It has really been all defense and the run game, kind of a black and blue throwback game. That's not something a lot of LFL fans are really used to. Three scores through one half of play. Let's look at those scoring plays. In the first quarter, it was the tight end, Keon Harrison, hauling in this two-yard pass from Dakota Hughes. That gave Atlanta an early 8 to nothing lead. In the second quarter, this snap from Deanna Hightower, sailing over the head of Chaz Dusan into the end zone, resulting in a safety as Atlanta extended its lead 10 to nothing. Then it was the great Gore, gutsy Gore, whatever you want to call her, a five-yard run between the tackles. That blew this game open at 18 to nothing. Atlanta with a commanding lead, just when you thought Chicago would roll over. With 58 seconds remaining, it was Chaz Dusan connecting with Javel Thompson on a 23-yard touchdown bomb. That brings us to our halftime score of 18 to six. Now let's look at those stats. Chicago has to develop a more consistent passing game. I just don't think Chaz Dusan is gonna get it done for them. Atlanta has to continue its ground game attack with Nicole Hulse and Alfie Gore ultimately setting up the play action passing game against that very raw and undisciplined Chicago secondary. Does Chicago have enough firepower? to get back into this game? Or will Atlanta improve to two and one? Here we go, the third quarter is next! 
Back to LFL football night as we look at our first half impact players. For Atlanta, Nicole Holst with that 5.7 yard average and Jocelyn Gray with seven and a half tackles in the first half. Let's go down to the field. Guys, I'm with perhaps the shyest player in the LFL, Dina Wajowski. Dina, it's fair to say that both teams' blood seems to be boiling over. What caused that fight? No, I mean, honestly, we're just getting baited into that. Part of that's on me as a, as a leader of this team. I need to be able to take a step back, take a breath, and understand that that's not football. That's just, you know, bullshit, really. That's, when you're reduced down not to be in a, to play and no football, that's where you get to. So we're not going to do that in the second half. All right, guys. Well, when the Chicago Bliss plays the Atlanta team, we don't call it a rivalry for no reason. Back to you guys. Can you tell that Wajowski is from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania? She has that steel mentality. I love it. She will be on defense as Chicago will look to mount a rally here as they built some momentum late in the first quarter with that 23-yard touchdown connection to Javel Thompson. Here's a crossing pattern off the hands of Tamika Robinson. That is the best footwork all night long by Dusan. She stepped up in the pocket, great throw right between the linebackers. It's a straight drop by Robinson. Setting up a second and 10. Ball remains at the 15 yard line. Chicago really hasn't had any run game. They have solely relied on the arm of the first year quarterback, Dusan. An ugly looking shovel pass to the outside to Javel Thompson. Give credit to Thompson, still on her feet. A 17-yard run, most of that coming after the catch. When I talked to offensive coordinator DeWalk, he said this play was in there. If she's wide open and there's nobody covering her, the quarterback's job is just get her to football anyway, anyhow. Even if it's a two-handed set pass like that, it worked, very effective. 17 of those yards going under the stat line for Dusan. But all the oh, effort there by Javille Thompson. A first and 10 from the Atlanta 18-yard line. Dusan calling her own number, now cutting inside, still on her feet. Gets deep pants all the way down to about the five-yard line. That's what Dusan can do for you. She can run. She reminds me of a Cam Newton-type quarterback. She's got the size, the speed. She's got the arm, but she has to be coached up. So now a first and goal inside the five. The only difference between Cam Newton and Chad Toussaint is Cam Newton can throw the ball. Toussaint has a strong arm, just needs a lot of help uh, technique. In everything. First and goal from the five. Receivers flank to the right side of Toussaint. Trying the left. You don't want to go to Amber Clark's side. All over Tamika Robinson. Clark has really become kind of a shutdown corner. If there's one in the LFL, Amber Clark checks that box. That's a young quarterback. You're right, you don't go after Amber Clark. She is the number one cover corner in the LFL. You stay away from her. Second and goal from the shotgun. A good snap back to Dusan, stepping up in the pocket. I'm not sure what that was. That'll fall incomplete, setting up a third and goal. It's about as ugly as it gets from quarterback play. I don't think that was stepping up in the pocket. That was running up in the pocket. I've never seen that. It's a straight run, and you try to throw on the dead run. It doesn't work. Ball remains at the five-yard line. We're approaching the seven-minute mark of a very fast-moving third quarter. Dusan with an empty backfield, and here comes that blitz up the middle. Going to try the corner. Kind of a jump ball. That pass intended for number nine, Labrinthia Murdoch, who had about four inches on Michelle Marshall. She was wide open behind Marshall. Marshall made a nice recovery, but here we go again. Dusan didn't throw the ball quick enough. That should have been a touchdown. Here comes that Atlanta home crowd, a big crowd inside Infinite Energy Center tonight. Shotgun into the end zone, outside shoulder. Touchdown, Chicago. They went right back to Labrinthia Murdoch. They like that matchup against Michelle Marshall. Wow, there's no air marshals in the secondary on this coverage. Great throw by Dusan. Somehow she gets the ball there. Right in the chest, touchdown, Chicago. Now, Chicago was a 16 and a half point underdog. They're making a run in Atlanta right now. Chicago electing to go for a two point attempt here. 
Receivers flank to the right side. Fakes the draw play. Looking to the end zone and deflected at the last second by Jolie of Fezikai. So this remains a six-point ball game. Of Fezikai coming on late. That's what she gives you at free safety. She has those long arms that defensive coordinators love. She reached in right there and just swatted it down. Atlanta cannot feel good about this as poorly as Chicago has played throughout this game. They're only down six points. I think they came into this game real cocky. They didn't think anything about Chicago. Chicago should be getting blown out. They thought even without Lauren Ziegler, they could blow these guys out, and they're not doing it. So now, a first and 10 as Dakota Hughes goes back to work. Inside handoff to Jolie of Fezikai. And there's that six foot one inside tight end with a seven yard run. With Ziegler out, of Fezikai is becoming an offensive force for Atlanta. Without those drops, she's having a heck of a game. Yeah, has all the physical tools. That is the one thing that's plagued her throughout her career starting in Pittsburgh has been the drops. If she can get consistent there, as I said, she has all the other tools to be a standout wide receiver, and now they're using her up front at the tight end position. And those drops, they can be corrected. It's all about focus and concentration. First and 10 from the 23. They're going to go back to the workhorse. That's Alfie Kaur. And Kaur churns out five yards. One-on-one, -on -one, Ty Alley is no match for Alfie Gore. It's just not going to happen. A first and 10 as the sticks move for this offense. And you got to think, they got to answer here. Otherwise, you're giving a team that's been down the whole season a lot of hope going into the fourth quarter. First and 10 handoff. And that looked like Alfie Gore just lost her footing. Does manage to fall forward for a law. Actually, it'll be a loss of a yard. Setting up second and 11. Anyone that's played on AstroTurf knows exactly what that was. That was the turf monster. The turf monster shows up just when you don't expect it to and just grabs you and pulls you down. Second and 11 ball at the Chicago 24. Dakota Hughes directing traffic in the backfield. Nicole Hulse and Alfie Gore remain. Crossing pattern. That's intercepted. Emma Vander Hayden absolutely jumped that route. If Hughes put some air under it, Christina Mattis, the speedster from Miami, was wide open for a touchdown. For some reason, she threw it right to Vander Hayden. Chicago's got the football. Wow. Giving that offense excellent field position at midfield. Emmer Vander Hayden coming out of nowhere, reading the eyes of Dakota Hughes and jumping that pattern. Do you get the feeling that Dane Robinson and this Atlanta team totally was overlooking Chicago? Absolutely. I think we all were. I was expecting a 60 to 15 type blowout, but the Chicago Bliss had other plans. First and 10, Chaz Dusan looking to the end zone wide open. Are you kidding me? Touchdown, Chicago. A 25 yard dart from Chaz Dusan to Tamika Robinson. Taki Taki Roomba, that play was unbelievable by Tamika Robinson. She literally broke Marshall's ankles on a quick post move, then turned it into a nine. Marshall fell backwards on the ground, and then she made an unbelievable adjustment to catch the ball. Great throw by Dusan, she puts it out there, but watch this, this is a, not an easy catch with the wall coming up. She adjusts, pulls it down before she runs into the wall. Unbelievable play for Chicago. Michelle Marshall had no shot after breaking her ankles at the line of scrimmage. Now Dusan, believe it or not, for the lead. Amber Clark hog tying Dusan at the one yard line. So we've got a tie ball game after the control Atlanta had throughout most of the first half. Believe it or not, we're tied up at 18 to 18. You're right, nobody would have called You got to dip, you too motherfucking strong. Dip your fucking body and get through there. That bitch fucking trash. Yeah, you out this series, come on. You got to hit it, you're not hitting that hole for me, Shaw. Let's go. That asshole about to get tight over there, y'all. That motherfucking ass is about to get tight. 
This is where we motherfucking take this motherfucking game over right now, all right? They ain't had no fucking adversity coming from us, all right? Everybody think this shit like we some fucking bums, like this house money. Fuck that, all right? Go get that shit. They still doing the same shit I said they was gonna do and that we fucking practice and rep. Feel confident in yourself. Go make plays right now. Let's go, let's go. Turn over, turn over, turn over. I got a hand at the head coach, Sidney Lewis. He has this team completely different than we saw early in the season. The attitude has changed. When he sat down, Kim Randall kept her at home in Chicago. Say, if you want to show up, she missed practice. You drive down to Atlanta, and she did. He's got this team playing for him. First and 10. Dakota Hughes not going anywhere. Deanna Hightower, who struggled on the offensive side at center, is putting on a show defensively. Hightower came to play tonight on defense from the first play of the game when she made the tackle. She hasn't stopped pursuing against Atlanta. Now the pressure falls squarely on the shoulders of Dakota Hughes and this offense. Nobody, and I mean nobody, expected this game to be 18 to 18 with nearly three minutes to go in the third quarter. This crowd is totally in shock right now. That's a Y underneath handoff. Keon Harrison to the 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Atlanta. That is how you respond. A 35-yard touchdown run by Harrison. Backside corner, number two, Ty Alley completely faked. She has containment. She comes inside, gets sucked in. Harrison goes outside all the way down the sideline. What an answer for Atlanta taking the lead back. After the mojo went back to Chicago, Keon Harrison steals it back. Die! Die! Come on. That's your one job in there. Come on. Up. Oh. Just what we said, she has outside containment. She got sucked in, and look what happened. Touchdown, Atlanta. We've got yet another flag on the Atlanta offense. In the years that we have seen this Atlanta offense with offensive coordinator Mark White and quarterback Dakota Hughes, I've never seen him this undisciplined with penalties. Rookie mistake, not watching the clock after you score a touchdown? Dakota Hughes getting thrown down to the ground and now just go, throwing Taylor. the ball. There you motherfucking go. Chicago, after giving up that 35-yard Harrison run, really stepping up, they're not ready to go away that easily. Not at all. You can totally tell that Chicago hey, is on, inside Michelle. of Atlanta's head right now. Come on! Both head coaches are fired up. There's a bit of tension on the face of Dane Robinson. On the other side, Sidney Lewis, he sees something in this team that nobody's seen up to this point. Coach Lewis, before the game, told me that he told his entire team, if they beat Atlanta tonight, they have just as many wins as Atlanta does, and they're in the playoff hunt. Yeah, the Eastern Conference is wide open. This is Chaz Dusan in the open field at midfield, down to the 15-yard line. Still on her feet, a 31-yard run by the six-foot-tall quarterback. What a move. Went inside, then juked outside, a little jump cut, and this is what she can give you. She's an outstanding runner. She does look like Cam Newton on this run. She might go all the way. She gets pushed out of bounds. What a play by Dusan. Jolia Fezikai looked like she wanted nothing to do with Chaz Dusan in the open field. Now the offenses are just going back and forth. They're answering one another like a heavyweight bout. Where's the Atlanta defense? First and goal, there it is. Or at least the start of it. That's number six, Alfie Gore on the sack. I guess technically it's a sack, but here we go again. Hightower with a low snap, and Dusan couldn't handle it. They gotta get that connection right if they wanna win. We're going to take a media timeout as Atlanta soars back in the lead, 24 to 18. Back to LFL football night in an Eastern Conference rivalry game that nobody expected. 
as the Chicago Bliss trail it 24 to 18. Ball at the nine of Atlanta. Here comes that crowd, Dusan, a design keeper to the right, trying to get the edge. Good job by a Fezekai to cut her off and limit her to about a four yard carry. Hey, Coach Sidney Lewis, he told me he put that play in just for tonight. That's a quarterback draw designed for Dusan to go straight up the middle. There was nothing there. She had surprising speed, got to the edge, but not a big gainer. She's just a large frame quarterback. I don't think a lot of those corners want anything to do with number 15. Here is that big Atlanta crowd trying to get behind their defense. Toss right, a reverse. Amber Clark, the all fantasy corner not biting. A great open field tackle on Tamika Robinson. Amber Clark taking this game into her own hands tonight, just dominating on defense right now. If Robinson kept that outside, she had her quarterback blocking back. She might have taken it in the end zone, but Clark went right through everything, made a great play. Here's a great opportunity for this Chicago offense. A fourth and goal. They've got to get to the end zone from the shotgun, rolling left. Gonna try to get past the defense, no shot, as Jolie Efezikai and AZ Johnson converge. Two great athletes going head to head. Efezikai did what she had to do, just get her out of bounds. A blown opportunity by Chicago inside the 10 yard line. They come out with no points. So Atlanta's offense takes over at their own four yard line. With an only six point lead, you cannot get too conservative here. I agree, they got the running game working, but you know who really stepped up tonight is a Fezekai. I wouldn't be surprised at all if Hughes went back to her. So now the Atlanta offense, another stoppage. It looks like Atlanta wants a timeout. Dane Robinson running down the sideline, trying to get the attention of the refs. God damn! Where the fuck attention? I'm not sure what that timeout exactly was for. Potentially the offense for Atlanta had the wrong personnel. So hey, defense sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. So hey, we gotta be able to go here when we see trends. We gotta get the bear going. We got to. Alright? There's plays out there to be made. Let's say they're struggling in the red zone. Alright? They're struggling in the red zone, but we have to take advantage of that. Here. Yeah. When we get empty, we go Marco. Right, you have to really talk to Alfie, say, hey, you're up top, because you were way out of position on one. If you're at three and, the, and you were covered, you got to be on the other side. Alfie's up top. That's, then you have to go to where the hole in the defense is on the other side. All right, come on. We're almost there. Come on, we got one more quarter to finish this shit out. Offense is going to score. There's a little breathing room there, but we need to execute. Come on. This is what I'm talking about. Here. Anything can happen. This is why we have to watch the occasion. Watch the occasion. This Atlanta defense has given up some big plays from Chicago tonight. Dane Robinson getting his younger, newer defensive players on the same page to hold this offense out of their end zone. This Atlanta offense has to be careful. Low snap. Nicole Hulse managing to get two yards and a little bit of breathing room for that offense. As we count down the final seconds of the third quarter, a quarter that saw the resurgence of the Chicago Bliss, making this a six point game. And Dane Robinson, ready to crawl into a hole, back for the final 10 minutes. When your number is called tonight, step up and make a name for yourself. Speak about all the people who doubt you, who say you can't, and go prove them wrong. This is not about who left this team. It's not about who came back. It's about who's here right now. Now we have to play like we've never played before, ladies. This isn't just football. This is family, sisterhood. It's your life. It's how you live your life. Look to the girl next to you and fight for your life. Fight for the girl who's sitting next to you in this huddle right now. This is all meant to be. Every single one of you is here tonight because of a purpose. We can do this. I know we can. 
This is the last time that I'm gonna tell you that I'm gonna let you down because I will not do it again. Let them understand that we are not here to play games with them. This is our game. Give it everything you have because all we got is 10 minutes. That's all we got. Hey, listen. Hey, no, listen. listen, hey. It's fourth quarter, y'all. This game is way too much fun. You have to score on this right here. You have to score. Give it all of everything you got. No, no, no. Just walk out of your feelings. Everybody, just walk out of your feelings. Win this fucking bubble game. Just so you know, we lose this motherfucking game. That's it. That's it. We're done. So how bad do you each and every viewer want this fucking game? How bad do you want to? Everyone's, oh, I want to make it to the Olympics. Show that shit right now that we deserve and that we fucking want to be there. Because this story and the way we're playing don't look like you want it. Let's go, y'all. Take it up. Hey. Everybody needs to chuck it in the bucket bucket. Fourth quarter is new. It's on. It's game time now. We got to finish. We talk about finishing all the time. We have to finish now. It's now or never. Who wants it? Show it to me. Let's do it. Finish on three. One, two, three. Finish. Come on, y'all. Two of the real leaders of the Atlanta Steam understanding the importance of this moment. They are 10 minutes away from either keeping their season alive, or in essence, it's the end of their season. This is not the game they wanted to be in in the fourth quarter, only up six on Chicago. A second and eight handoff. Alfie Gore breaking through arm tackles. An 11 yard carry, sending a message early in the fourth quarter. Wow. Gore came in the fourth quarter in beast mode. Went right through Jessica Smith. What a run. A nine-yard carry, make it an 11-yard carry. So that'll be enough for a first down right out of the gate. You could see the emotion is on the side of the Atlanta steam right now. Again to Alfie Gore, and why not? What blocking up front by Wachowski and the rest of that Atlanta line. But what a weak effort by number three. Organziniak, watch this, she's in the backfield. She's a chance to make a play. She won arms it, didn't even try to make the tackle. This Chicago defense struggling, defending oh, Alfie Gore. Right. And for that matter, Nicole Hulse with her speed to the hole and to get to the outside, I would keep it on the ground if I was Atlanta. And that's just what they'll do, Alfie Gore. That is three successive runs of 11, 9, and 7 yards. An astonishing 27 yards on three carries. Alfie Gore right now, she is simply the solution. This is the Alfie Gore show in the fourth quarter. A first and 10 at the Chicago 17. Atlanta up six and trying to add to its lead. Going back to Gore. Gore working up the middle of that defense. Rack up six more yards for number six. Is this a replay for Tura or Gazaniak? She came off the edge, number three, in the backfield again, but simply didn't close the deal, didn't make a play. Alfie Gore not even winded at this point, as she remains in this game, has literally put this Atlanta steam offense on her back. Now a second and four at the 11 from the shotgun. Here comes the blitz. Dakota Hughes manages to get to the outside and cuts in. A six yard run for Dakota Hughes. Hughes totally fooled number three, or gets in the act again. She came inside too hard. She pulled the football one outside, nobody there. Another bad play by Orkizniak. Now a first and goal at the Chicago seven yard line as Atlanta continues to work on this clock with a six point edge and we've got a penalty. Hughes very confident, but the initial indication that this will go against Atlanta. Snap. False start, number four offense, five yard penalty, remains first down. That penalty on Michelle Marshall and then we've got another flag flying. That looked like Dina Wojowski may have taken a shot at a Chicago player. Wojo reminds me when I was young and stupid. This is a terrible thing to do. She punched her right in the face. After the play, 
personal foul, unnecessary roughness, 17 offense. 10 yard penalty, down remains one. I wouldn't be smiling there. You are costing your team. And here's another look at the blow to the head. You cannot let a rookie bait you like that when you've been in the game for six years. I'm sorry. Right after Lauren Ziegler gave that speech to the entire team, they have to win this game. If they lose, they're out of the playoffs. You can't take that bait from a rookie. So now a first and goal at the 22. Two plays ago, it was first and goal at the seven. Toss right. That Chicago defense is really keying in on Alfie Gore. That, that is the play of the night for Jessica Smith. Coming off the edge, she came in hard. Stop Gore one-on-one, -on -one, and the size difference is incredible. Great play by Smith. Chicago realizing if they want a shot to get back into this game, the defense has got to get a stop on this series. They're doing it. Atlanta's moving backwards. So now a second and goal at the 23. This may force Dakota Hughes to go to the air. That's what they're going to do, a crossing pattern. That looked like miscommunication, possibly, with two receivers in the same spot. That was actually the pick play they ran earlier in the game. The outside receiver is supposed to pick, rub, get in the way of whatever you want to call it, a physicized defender, but they ran into each other. That'll set up a third and goal at the 23. And if you're Atlanta, you've got to pick up a couple chunk plays here. You've really got to hand it to the Chicago defense. They had to come up with a stop, and they're doing it. Third and goal, ball at the 23. Dakota Hughes dropping back. Here comes the blitz. Going to go to the end zone. And overshooting her target, Christina Mattis. Mattis had Jessica Smith burnt on a post pattern wide open. You simply couldn't get her to football. You have to make that play. You have to throw that ball right in there. You can see how antsy Lauren Ziegler is on the sideline. This type of situation is made for number 14. She's done it her entire career, but she didn't get pulled until right before the game started. So the connection, Mattis with Hughes, they haven't had that many reps together. Hindsight is 20-20, but I bet you Dane Robinson is second guessing himself for letting Lauren Ziegler sit out of this game. Fourth and goal across the middle. Had a Fezikai even caught that ball, she was nowhere near the goal line. She got past the defender, Gray. Watch, she's open. Gray actually falls down. Watch, she trips over a Fezikai. If somehow she can lead a Fezikai, she goes in the end zone. That's Tara Organiziak coming through on the blitz in that hurry, Dakota Hughes. So Chaz Dusan in this Chicago offense in prime position. Another high snap from Deanna Hightower. And Rachel Blaylock in her coming out party is having quite the night for the Atlanta steam. Blaylock laying the wood on Chaz Dusan. Let's listen in. If I was Sid Lewis, I would put the quarterback under the center. These high snaps are killing him. So now a second and 19. Oh, it's pass! It's pass! That was a loss of nine yards. Dusan from the pocket. Nearly intercepted. And really, that should have been caught by Jolie Efezikai. We spoke about Efezikai and how she had a problem catching football. You're right, that ball should have been caught. If she makes that interception, that might have sealed the victory for Atlanta. And this crowd is going to be on Chaz Dusan in this Chicago offense with 340 remaining in the fourth quarter. I don't think either of us expected this game to be this thrilling this late. Nobody in the LFL family did. Third and 19, and that's deflected. Deflected at the line of scrimmage, and A.Z. Johnson is having quite the game. Look at the sticks. Sky, sky, sky. Dane Robinson going into the sky coverage. If you remember, Javel Thompson beat him deep on the sky coverage in the first half. You move back. Look at the sticks. Sky. 
Dane Robinson urging on this Atlanta crowd. Fourth and 19, the young signal caller will be tested. From the shotgun, Dusan looking down the field. A 50-50 ball to Tamika Robinson. And now we've got a penalty. They're going to call this a pass interference on AZ Johnson. It absolutely is. The ball was underthrown. She had to come back for the ball, and Johnson ran right through her. Pass interference, defense number nine. Ten-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Wow, that saves what would have been a stalled Chicago drive. Well, come here, come here, come here, come here. That's a spot foul. We just talked about it. We just talked about it in the meeting. Look, we just talked about it in the meeting. We just talked about it in the meeting. That's a spot foul. Pass and appearance is a spot foul. More than 10, folks. What? It's a spot foul. That's Sidney Lewis lobbying his case for a spot foul. Instead, it's an automatic first oh. down. Any way you look at it, it's unbelievable. They converted a fourth and 19 in Atlanta. Ball's at the 24. So new life for this Chicago offense. Rolling left, throwing across her body and caught. I tell you what, Tamika Robinson. Robinson is playing the game of her career tonight. And Dusan came out with a pass of her life, getting the ball relax, to Tamika. Okay. That will take us to the two-minute warning in a game that very much so hanging in the balance as Chicago trying to rally late. Back for the final two thrilling moments after this. Back to LFL football night, and next week, we are in the Music City as the Nashville Knights host the Denver Dream. I need your best pass rushes here. You have no choice but to make it happen, all right? If we're coming off the edge, I need you to pay the fuck attention and get there. If we have Hawk, when they're there, so Hawk, then they're empty. Go, whoever my end is, I need you in the A-gap and up. This is unbelievable. Chicago has the ball on the Atlanta 14-yard line. Two minutes left in the game. Now, if they go in for a score, they don't only tie it, they can possibly win it, and this game's over. The Chicago Bliss are in a great position here. They can actually take the lead with the extra point should they get a touchdown. They can steal this game right now. First and 10, Dusan. Trying to connect with Javel Thompson on a screen pass. And you can see Thompson saying, hey, set it back a bit. That does stop the clock, setting up a second and 10. I do like the read by Dusan. That is in the game plan. If they're playing off like AZ Johnson was on Thompson, just get her the ball in space and let her do her thing. But he, she didn't concentrate, made a really bad pass. If I was the Atlanta defense, I would be focusing on Tamika Robinson and Javille Thompson, they've done all the damage. From under center, Dusan throwing, setting up the screen. Caught, open field. Javille Thompson, they're gonna mark her out at about the two yard line. Great read by Dusan, they came with a blitz. The hot receiver was Thompson out of the backfield. Great shoestring catch. She's gonna take it in, it looks like. What a read, what a call. Chicago's had a chance to win this thing. AZ Johnson saving the touchdown. Actually mark it at the one yard line. Javille Thompson did get out of bounds, so the clock does stop. That could actually play to the favor of the Atlanta steam. Dusan under center. She's gonna try the quarterback sneak and still motoring to the goal line. They're gonna mark her short, they blew the whistle. Alfie Gore with the game-saving tackle. Hey y'all, don't let them bitch us, bro, don't let them bitch us. 
I think the referee stopped that play too early. I think her forward progress was not stopped. She ended up getting in the end zone. Just let them play the game. They cannot challenge it, Chicago. This has to come from the booth. And maybe that's what Chaz Dusan is waiting or just milking the clock, knowing that Atlanta is going to have no time when they get the ball back. Again, up the middle. What an effort by that interior defense. Again, led by Keon Harrison and Alfie Gore. I don't know if that's good or bad. The play might be let them score because the clock's running. They can run this game almost out. Atlanta does have a timeout remaining. Timeout Atlanta, their second timeout of the second half, their final timeout. And there goes that timeout with 50 seconds on the clock and a third and goal coming up for Chicago. You may not do it again, hey, but listen, everything is on the line right now. Everything, listen, but I believe in each of the seven of you out there, there's a reason you're out on that field. So it's right now that you have to show why you're on the field, all right? Put it all out on the line, this is it. That's Dakota Hughes urging on her defense, knowing that if Chicago scores here and they get that extra point, the Atlanta offense could be behind a serious eight ball. That's if they get the ball back. There's only 50 seconds remaining. This has the makings of the LFL upset of the year. This is unbelievable. Less than a minute, and Chicago can steal this game. Here comes that Atlanta crowd on a third and goal ball inside the one yard line. Tamika Robinson under center. Look for the quarterback sneak right up the middle and into the end zone. What a clutch play by Tamika Robinson and an underdog, Chicago Bliss. This is why you play the game. This is shocking the LFL world. If they get the extra point, they will steal this game from Atlanta. Unbelievable. A 16 and a half point underdog were the Chicago Bliss. And now they're virtually one yard away, as you said, from stealing a shocker on the road in Atlanta. Hey, this is the shit right here. Yeah. All right? Yeah. One fucking play. Get that motherfucking money. You here, you here. You got I think Sydney Lewis is more charged up than those young ladies right now. I think Sid Lewis is in shock that he's in this position. Here it is. Wow. What a beautifully set up extra point. And Chicago now takes a 25 to 24 lead on the road, capping a nine play 27 yard drive that took up four minutes and six seconds. What an unbelievable play. What a play call by Sid Lewis. They fake the quarterback sneak. She hands the ball behind to Thompson and she runs untouched in the end zone. What a call. What a win for Chicago if they can hold on. Now 47.7 seconds remain. And if there's one person you would want with the football, it's that young lady, the cardiac kid, with 47 seconds remaining. Her rookie year, she did this every game. She pulled it out in the last second. A poor snap back to Hughes, tosses it up. Deflected to the 10-5. Do you believe in miracles? The Cardiac Kid is back. Wow, what a play. I got goosebumps just looking at this. Jolie of Fezekai. After the deflected pass, holds it in. A 35-yard touchdown. A look of absolute shock on the face of Sid Lewis. What composure by Hughes. She bobbled the snap, threw it up there for a Fezekai. It got tipped by number 17, Jocelyn Gray. All she had to do was knock it down, but she tipped it up. A Fezekai jumped all over it, took it in for six. Yeah, Gray tried to make a play on the ball, 
and the most improbable of things happen. Jolia Fezekai, who's had an up and down game, had an opportunity to end this game with a possible interception, dropped the ball, could be the hero of the moment for Atlanta. As I always say, big time players make big time plays in big time games. What a play by Fezekai. So Chicago does manage to hold on. Hey, 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 pay attention. Hey, for, for 39 seconds, I need your attention. We're gonna play strong safety. We're gonna go halves here. There, she's free safety. Halves, empty, sky. Hey, stay, you got 39 seconds in here? Go get it. Dane Robinson telling his defensive backs, keep everything underneath, don't get beat deep, and they're gonna try to put some heat on Dusan. Chaz Dusan is no Dakota Hughes but 39 seconds is a lot of time for this Chicago offense. Dusan's arm is just as strong as Dakota Hughes. She can throw it down the field. She has some fast receivers. Wow, this is gonna be fun to see what happens. Tamika Robinson has been the deep threat all night. Along with that young lady underneath, Javille Thompson. Yes, and if sir. you're Chicago, you don't have to go for it all here. Sigo. You can work the sidelines. They do have a timeout remaining. A good snap back to Dusan. They're going to try the middle of the field and caught. That is Murdoch. An 18-yard completion. And Chicago will call its final timeout. Somehow that ball was caught. Alfie Gore was playing so deep. Come was... on! Come here! Come here! Come on! Guys, guys, we can't get anything. Nothing underneath. Nothing! I need to go down faster! Nothing! Hey, hey, I need to go to will. Guys, come on. Nothing! Game's here. Somehow this ball gets down, it floats. It's almost like a Hail Mary, but Gore is so deep. She can't get up there enough to break it up. They're in this ball game again. A lot of time left on the clock. Yeah, ball at about the 16 yard line. They're out of timeouts, but now you can start taking shots into the end zone. Baker now in the game at quarterback. Dusant got hit, she limped off the field. What a time to get hurt. Baker's taking her first snap of the game. First and 10, and here comes that Atlanta crowd. Dropping back to pass is Baker into the end zone. Nearly intercepted by Jolia Fezekai, a Jekyll and Hyde type player. Either she is on or she is off. That's twice she could have interceptions to end the game and she dropped it again. Baker with a horrible pass, just throw it up for grab. Harrison actually gets a piece of the ball. It's floating up there like a duck. All the Fezza guy has to do is catch the ball. The game's over, but she dropped it. So the would-be hero could become the GOAT of this game if Chicago scores and wins this game. Unbelievable turn of events. Just a second ago, she had the immaculate reception part two. Now she could be the GOAT. A bad snap back to Baker. And the clock is winding down 19 seconds. They got to get up and down the football. Look how casual Baker is being right now with the clock running down. She has no idea. They're going to lose this football game. Under five seconds, they're not going to be able to line up here. No. Didn't even snap the ball. Deanna Hightower has to be explained that the game is over. What a self-destruction by the Chicago Blitz. I'm speechless right now. I mean, that is coaching that is not being a quarterback. You got to snap the football, get one more play. How can your center and quarterback not be aware of the game situation in the final play? Simply unacceptable. In 30 seconds, they go from the thrill of victory to the agony of defeat. You can see the joy on the sidelines and up in the stands as the Atlanta steam improved to 2-1 and one, and the Chicago Bliss dropped to 0-3. Dakota Hughes is back to a one-name quarterback.
just like her rookie year, we, we just call her Dakota, like Beyonce, like Rihanna. The cardiac kid is back. This might be the game that takes her to the next level. Let's go down to the field with Heidi. Hi guys, I'm with Alfie Gore and Amber Clark in possibly the most exciting game of the season. How does this win feel tonight? You played the best game of your life. Um, unfortunately, I don't believe that, but I do appreciate that. Um, also, I just feel like we, we held it together. We bend, but we don't break. As a team, I think we did a very good job. We won, and a win is a win. I'm excited to keep moving forward and be all ahead and beat Omaha, so yeah. Thank you. All right, congratulations, Alfie. So tell me how this feels for you tonight. I mean, it was an ugly one, but I mean, like I said, a win is a win. No matter how you get it, a win is a win. But we got to come back stronger. We got a game in less than two months. So we're going to come back stronger, harder. Believe me, this was not the best we had. We have so much more. Just come back August 3rd. You'll see how much more we have. All right, guys. We'll see how much they have in about two months. Back to you guys. Amber Clark and Alfie Gore having career games for the Atlanta Steam. But the Chicago Bliss sent a message tonight. They are not ready to roll over. But in the end, it was Jolie of Fezikai, the unlikely hero, with perhaps the biggest play in Atlanta Steam franchise history. That will do it for us from Atlanta, Georgia. For my broadcast partner, Bobby Huco, our sideline reporter, Heidi Golsnick, our producer, Alex Saxon, welcoming back our director, Austin Lake. This is Mitch Mortaza. We will see you next week on LFL Football Night.